What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. May 26, 2020, we just finished Memorial Day. Uh, SPY has officially tried for the reclaim of the 200 day moving average. And if you go back in history, let's just kind of take a trip down memory lane. Now, here's what is different, okay? You can see the crossovers are, are notated by this right here, but if we go in here and I can just modify this and actually I'm not, I'm not gonna waste my time doing that, forget about it, doesn't matter. All right, so the different side here is that we've crossed over, we got the cross, and now we're reclaiming the 200-day, trying to reclaim the 200-day moving average. Now, if many of you are like me, you're probably, yeah, no, Larissa, I'm sorry. My camera, I, the USB, I've got like 40 things plugged into my laptop right now, so my webcam is turned off. I got all kinds of other stuff running, you know, all my porn servers, you know, streaming live. So no camera today, AKA I'm naked <laughs> no not naked not naked funny story though today i put on pants i put on pants at like 8 45 my time which is like 15 markets at 15 minutes after the market open i usually don't put on pants until like 1 a 1 p.m my time which is 2 p.m market time i usually have not but or maybe if i go to lunch you know around 11 or 12 and i put on pants today like 15 minutes into the market and my wife walks in and she goes where are you planning on going and i was like oh so just because i put on pants it means i'm going somewhere i can't just like wear pants but yeah that's welcome to the day in the life of my household all right so i just find pants restricting anyway Let's jump back in time here to the only period of time, in all truth and reality, that is really comparable to the current market we're in should be in the 80s. Does Spy even go back that far? Is this fucking chart not even go back that far? Am I gonna have to switch to a weekly? Don't do this to me. Why you gotta do me like that? Oh, God have mercy. Sorry. I swear I'm generally more prepared than this. I. The spy. Thank you, Tinkerswim. I did not just wake up, but I actually did have to go cook pizzas for the family before I came to do this. And so I was like, run, I was like, finish the pizza, finish the pizza, get back in there, finish the pizza, get back in there. So I thought I was going to be able to go back to 1985 on Thinkorswim, but apparently they're a bunch of Nazi communists. So, and I don't honestly even know if I can do it here. Oh yeah, I can do it with the SPX on here, right? Yahtzee. I can do the SPX on here. That's what I used to do. Ah, uh, it's coming back to me now. Channel. Ah, finally, there we go. When was that point in time that I was talking about? Here's what I wanna point out here. That becomes a very interesting situation, okay? If you look at a weekly time frame, we're still like miles apart from ever crossing over. Like we are miles apart. Okay, different situation here being this retracement wasn't 85, this right here it was that, it was that shenanigan right there. Now I can go back to day, Batman. There it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. So if we actually reclaim the 200 day moving average in the overall markets, I think it's gonna be a very interesting period of time, okay? Many people are sitting back and waiting for the secondary move down, which when everybody's ready for it, what happens? It never fucking comes, right? It turns into a slow chop and it starts to set higher lows. 1987. Okay, not 85, 87. 87, big panic. Just, whoa, hold on to your britches, fellers. You get the reclaim. Now, here we are today. Okay, bit different, bit different scenario. However, chart wise, has a lot of similarities. Okay, has a lot of similarities. So we could easily see a rejection of 3,000. 
3,000 back to 2,800. And as we've seen, Trump was busting out some technical analysis. There you go. Stock market up big. Dow crosses 2,500 S&P over 3,000. States should open up ASAP. I mean, he's calling out everything. Like it's, we're back in bullish territory. Like we are very much close to being back in bullish territory. However, this little hook right here, we got a long way to go before we ever get this crossover like this right here. All right, any other questions? Anything else? Yes, Tay, for 100%. Yes, Larissa, I'll look at my kitchen and now I'm gonna think about Slack every time. Please, he's fuck oh, BA, I'm sorry, Cole. I knew as, so as soon as I saw you typing, I knew what you were gonna ask, sorry, Boeing. <coughs> and ERI too, thank you guys for reminding me. Um, I'm not sure why airlines were bouncing so much today, um, but it feels to me like we've finally broken outside of a range across the uh the airline market so i i'm gonna go on the assumption that boeing is going to get some juice based on that and so i'm not necessarily short biased on boeing my lines obviously as you can see are right here 120 130 135 140 145 160 you know i would love to see you know an opening range breakout on 145 like that would be a really nice situation. Yeah, exactly. All the airlines are popping now because Bow's flying again. <laughs> <laughs> and not to mention, on a flight within a week, two flights within a week, I'm like, man, you're really, you're really getting aggressive with this whole corona business. Let me just go ahead and get on these planes. What's harder, setting risk or managing a winner? Oh, fuck. For me, would be managing a winner. I really have an itchy trigger finger. Once I start to take a profit, I am so fast to just take it all. So incredibly fast at it. Uh, so BA, I would like to see, I'm obviously interested in this 145 line. So I'd like to kind of see a week open tomorrow, a week open, and then a jam through 145 to join that long trend on the opening range breakout type of setup. My take on RCL and NCLH, my take on RCL and, or, and CCL, either one, is that my main interest lies in RCL as they have the biggest market cap and the most cash on hand. So I'm I'm most focused on them. And if I were going to to uh, pick up a position, I would, I would probably buy options with a two year expiration with probably, uh, I, would, I would like to pay at the money. And so I would probably consider like the $50 strike. Uh, I would be, you know, $50 strike two years out and then hold it long term. It'd be really nice to scoop some in the 40 area, like $40 strike. But in this, in this case of RCL, you know, you're, you're anticipating that we finally continue the trend, which, you know, is just so hard to, to know when that time is. But I mean, it's, you can, it's just like clear as day triangle, you know, that is forming throughout this thing, but it's a very gradual triangle. And so it's hard to truly have conviction. And I mean, you can justify that. I like that low a little bit better, just connecting those two points. So you connect those two points together, you get that triangle. So you could easily see a retracement back into the, you know, 40 into the low 30 or mid thirties. So I'd, you know, I'd like to say I'd buy RCL soon, but you know, I've, uh, JPM iterates uh, $50 price target. So we're trading at analyst price targets, most tier ones. Goldman Sachs cuts price target to 49 from 79. Uh, or to 40 from 79. Um, who else is a big name in here? So you got Goldman and JPM. <clears throat> Stifle, I don't care about Stifle. So you've got some downgrades coming through, but I mean, they're obviously not going to fucking go out of business. Yeah, look, Royal Caribbean liquidity of approximately 2.3 billion as of April 30th. Yeah, I don't think. I, that's why I'm most interested in, in Royal Caribbean. Another thing I've been long is XLM, Exxon. I've been long since... 36 and some change. RCL, I like, I like the, <clears throat> I like RCL though. All truth and reality though, I'd like to see a retracement back, but yeah. Thanks for being here guys and gals. There's a lot more women in this chat room now. So <clears throat> I have to be very careful. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. 
Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over